Welcome to Acting Lessons Learned, Creating an Actor Bullet Journal. This is my first attempt at bullet journaling. Oh, really quickly, all the items used in this video are from Amazon, and I'll have affiliate links in my description below. Okay, so this is the Paperage Dotted Journal Bullet Notebook. It's 5x7, 100 GSM white paper, and comes in several different colors. I like the size of this one. I chose white because I just want something very calming for 2021, as you can imagine. This has an envelope in the back and looks like some stickers that you can use for cataloging. But what I also like is that it's the pages are sewn in, so you don't have to worry too much about losing your pages. And since I'm new to bullet journaling and I'm not really good at freehand stenciling, I bought these great stencils with lots of options, which can be a little overwhelming, but uh, prior to recording this video, I chose which stencils I would use repeatedly over and over. And um, I'm gonna try my hand at some freehand writing um, in some very small ways because it does take time to really perfect that craft. But here you go. These stencils will be also in the description and you'll watch me use them as we go along. I decided the best way for me to approach this would be to use a soft palette. Uh, I chose some colors prior to um, making my attempt at creating this. And I have here my Muji pen, a retractable pencil. This is my favorite, this gold uni ball gel. I call it like, it's a gel, but it's kind of like a gold leaf. It's really pretty, you'll see it later. And then there are these muted Tombow blendable water markers. So this palette, again, like I was saying, I wanted something very calming for my nervous system, um, makes me happy when I look at it. Now I'm doing some test swatches. I have a lot of these Tombow markers in various different colors. Some of them can tend to look alike. So these are color swatches to remind me, maybe later on if I come back and do a different spread, which colors I used and for what. Most Buju connoisseurs or professionals <laughs> tend to use these water markers because they don't bleed through your paper. Um, nothing like having some good old ink, like a Sharpie, show up on the other side, rendering a rear side of the page unusable. So that's what's great about these. This side is the felt tip, and then there's the other side, which is more like a marker tip. And I mean, I guess if you keep going over and over it, it will start to bleed through, but it takes a little while. It's kind of like watercolors, it's really nice. And then this is my favorite pen, the gold leaf pen. It reminds me of Chinese New Year, which is coming up soon, um, but it'll be a nice embellishment with everything. So these are my colors. These are, this is the stencil. And now we are going to move into the actual creation. So let's start with the essentials of the bullet journal. Buju, oh, Bujo stands for bullet journal. The BU is in the bullet and the JO is in the journal. So I have the index, the future log, the monthly log, the daily log. The numbers inside the parentheses are the pages of the spread that I'm going to keep open uh, for each category or spread, if you will. Now I have some actor essentials. There's some missing here, but I have an audition log. I have a target list for casting directors. I have a representation page for when I start to look for new representatives and I have a marketing page. And then right now what I'm writing are all my side projects. I have some small businesses and I have a new project that I'll be working on and I'd like to have them all within the bullet journal. As I mentioned before, this is my first time doing a bullet journal. I am someone who prefers to have a journal um, instead of just my phone because I tend to forget to look at my phone and to look at my calendar. So I've always had some form of a journal or a planner for the past 10 years. But the one thing that's always missing is some form of tracker or pages where I can keep track of my actor career. And then I usually have to put it in a different notebook or put it on my computer. And I'm just not as consistent when it's not in one place. So that's why I'm choosing to do the bullet journal because I can create it the way I want to. Now, the creator, uh, writer Carol, wrote a book about it. I've 
finished reading, or actually I listened to the audiobook, and the way that he creates or forms or structures his bullet journal, it's quite minimal. It's a little too minimal for my taste, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that there's some people that want a little bit more of embellishment than others. So I decided to look on YouTube and see if I could get some ideas for my journal. And it's a rabbit hole. If you're new to bullet journaling and you go to YouTube, you will, well, I'll speak for myself. I was extremely overwhelmed with the design efforts of many people. But then I learned that there's many schools of thought on how to bullet journal. Of course, there are the purists, which there's purists in everything who just really like things the way they are and don't want to um, move away from that, deviate from it. And then there's the extreme artists who like probably go to art school and they make it so beautiful and it looks so easy when you watch, but it's really not. And then there's people in between who just decide to make it the way they want to make it. And so that's what I decided to do. Now I will, I might as well just get over it and just tell you the truth. Uh, this is my second time creating the bullet journal. The first one I created, I had no idea what color scheme I was going to use. I had no idea what type of des design scheme I was going to use. And so it turned out to be like this mishmash of all these different design ideas and um, all of these crazy colors that really was giving me anxiety and just was unattractive for what I was looking for. So I started over. And don't worry, that other book is going to be used as a journal, which is perfect because it's um, it's a softer cover than this. And um, I started using that as my journal for 2021. So now launching into, this is the first spread of Bujo, the future log. This is where you park all of your future ideas, events, tasks for the future into the appropriate months. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really care for the way I started um, the title of this. I don't like the colors of, I don't like the font. So I'm going to change this later on. I can tell you that for sure. But in the meantime, you just keep going. But what's great about bullet journaling and creating your own is you can Okay, first of all, there's no such thing as perfection when you're doing this, which is another reason why I like it, because you just create how you, you create what you want to create in the way that you want to create it. And it's only for you. So you don't really have to worry about other people looking at it, although I'm sharing it with you here. But mistakes are welcome. It's really a create a creative juncture of how do you overcome the mistakes. And you're going to see that later on. Right now I'm doing a two page spread just to remind me to one, stay focused and to stay in my lane. So 2020, I, I can imagine for most people was just hard to maintain focusing on one thing. And so I'm calling that in for 2021 and this visual display will help me do that. And so see, you have this roomy quote. I'm a fan of roomy quotes. They really resonate with me. Your heart knows the way, run in that direction, which is a reminder for me, especially as an actor, because it's very easy for us to, well, I'll speak for myself again. I don't want to just make a, a broad statement. It's very easy for me to say, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I want to do this. And when I've done that in the past, it usually kind of derails me. It takes me off course. So I found that the more that I just streamline my goal and stay on one path, the more momentum I get and the more success I have. Now, naturally, things will branch off on their own and sometimes without a lot of um, effort, sometimes with the least resistance. So I just focus on one thing. Now what I'm creating is my marketing page. Every month I send out a marketing material, usually in the form of a postcard and also um, in on email using email, I usually, I typically use MailChimp and um, basically I'm informing the casting directors of any bookings that I may have had, anything that's coming up, any type of success that they would deem viable to bring me in um, for uh, a job, for an audition. Now here's that mistake I was telling you about because it was supposed to say marketing and it's Mar Mertin. So here's one of these 
point where I get to figure out how do I want to course correct. So I start with some washi tape. Maybe I can find something in here and maybe create some strips and then it's like choosing a color. And so I finally decide on this one color and I'm ready to put it down. And then I realize I don't really want that block of washi tape there. So I just used a correction tool and completely whited it out and then started over. The only thing about this is, you know, anytime you use some sort of correcting, correcting tape, the markers don't really bleed fully. So I have to go over it a couple of times. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about how else can I make this beautiful, make it a beautiful example of, oh, let's see, make it a beautiful mistake. That's what I'm thinking. So this leaf that I'm using is going to go all out because I like the gold pen and it reminds me of gold leaf. I started to use gold leaves and you'll see this as a, um, as a thing that goes throughout my entire bullet journal. And they kind of look like birds and then they look like leaves, but this just made this whole mistake a beautiful masterpiece and now I'm happy to look at it. So as I was explaining, this is where I will jot down any ideas that I have in terms of my promotional materials and the things that I wanna mail. And once I have it in front of me, then I can jot out the action steps of when of what it is I'm going to design and at what point I'm going to send it. But I know I typically like to send things out at the end of the month. So that gives me a whole 30 days, especially with January, because at the top of January, we don't really have much going on because we're coming back from hiatus. So in January, I tend to wait towards the end of the month and I've already sent my first postcard. Um, I actually did a trial run because I don't know how many, or casting directors actually are in their offices now due to COVID. Um, I worked one job on the Warner Brothers lot and there seemed to be a lot of production going on there. So I have to assume that there are a lot of casting directors on the studio lot and maybe those in their offices, I'm not sure. Now I'm working on my target list. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Every year, I come up with a target list. Actually, the people that will be on this target list are have been on my target list for maybe the past year and a half. And there's like three components to who I put on my target list. There's the offices of the shows that I like. There's the offices of the shows that I like that hire a lot of guest stars because that means there'll be space for me as opposed to a show that really just focuses on the main cast. And then the offices of the shows that I like that hire a lot of guest stars that tell the stories that I want to tell. And so I came up with a list of 27 and to kind of like make it easier for me, the 27 that I have, most of those casting directors cast multiple shows. So it's kind of like, you know, making my choices of my target list more robust by sending out one postcard to somebody who casts maybe three to six different shows. And for that uh, target list, I only showed you one page, but you'll see later that it's actually two pages and I'll show you what it looks like once it's filled out. Right now, this is my audition log. Um, it's, it's short because I would think that I would be auditioning more than 28 times this year. But I, what's great about, again, the Bujo, uh, the Bujo is that I can add sheets and spreads at any point. And as long as my pages are numbered, I can catalog them in the index. Now I'm creating my ideas page. I belong to a sketch comedy group and we write a lot of sketches and we film them mostly via Zoom. And um, every week we get on a call and we pitch ideas. So I need that page to be able to do that. And I really like to write freehand. So I don't really care for a whole lot of structure when I'm writing and brainstorming ideas. Um, if you look at my past notebooks, you'll see it's just like information everywhere, but I know what it is. So all of these pages are my projects and my small businesses, 
Proof is a new project that I'm working on and Acting Lessons Learned is my blog, which is this or vlog. And then there's Actor Business School, which is a business school for actors that I'm creating right now for Teachable. And oh, uh, Postcards and One Sheets, which is now a new company that's taken the place of an old company. My old company was yourvisualaid.com. That's AID, A-I-D-E, so your visual aid, A-I-D-E. If you look on Instagram or Facebook, you can see my previous work. Right now, I am doing the monthly journal, starting with January. And so here are all the tasks that I'd like to conquer during January. It is a lot of them, but no worries. I just like to get everything down. And what I don't get completed in January will get migrated to February and so on and so forth. That's me filling out the pages of the actual days. And I almost forgot, but I have to go back and do my index because this is the best part about a bullet journal is having an index to tell you exactly what lives where and on what page. So here I am now just finalizing this and then, oh, I have to give a little decorative flourish to the opening. And once we get here, okay, so this is me doing my little freehand lettering and I feel really good about it. Now, I won't go crazy because these are just four numbers and it's easy to really do that really quickly. That's my name and my IG, just in case it gets lost. And here's the finished product. Da, da, da. I'm really happy with this opening page. Here's my index. I already started to fill in some of the pages. There's one of my roomy quotes. The book will be filled with roomy quotes. Remember I told you I didn't like the way Future Log look? This is the reboot. And I'll probably jazz this one up a little bit, but you can already see that there's more embellishments on the page. And then here's my target list with 27 of the casting directors I spoke of. I'm gonna be looking for new representation soon. So I'll be using this page as my list to keep track of the people that I'm going to go for. I usually keep it between like 10 to 12 people at a time just to make it manageable because I do a lot of research in terms of finding the type of representation that I really like to collaborate with. Um, this is Actor Business School, Postcards and One Sheets, Proof. I can't tell you about Proof. You'll just have to wait and see. I'll make an announcement when that time comes, probably around Labor Day. Right now it's in the infancy, infancy stages. And you see that all of the days are numbered and dated here's February which is where we are now and I feel like I'm starting to get oh my goodness I had to add an at a glance calendar for the month so I'll be doing that going forward that there's a roomy quote but I feel like I'm getting the hang of this and now I've stopped at March and I'll keep on going but it's coming along really nicely for my first one. So if you decide that you're gonna make a bullet journal, I implore you to just keep it simple so that you don't go with I went through. And that's it. If you like what you saw here, please feel free to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.